The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock, and my refuge. A shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge, and my savior. A valiant man to save me. Second Samuel 22. That verse of encouragement that addresses you as son. My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not do harm when he is rebuked. Because the Lord disciplines those he loves and accepts those he punishes as his sons. And you hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? If you are not disciplined, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and who respected them for it. How much more? Should we submit to the Father of our spirits and name? Our fathers discipline us for a little while, as you were taught best, but God disciplines us for our good, that we may share in His holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful later on, however, it produces a habit of righteousness and peace who have been trained by the Lord. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, it will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flame will not set you aflame. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel. Your sin. I guess I will pull out the body and cleanse me. When I have a family members, pastors, to please go out at the body and spin roll out and do a process.
Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will take rest and give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. He who dwells in the sacred place of the Most High will rest in the saddle of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. My God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the power of sin and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. The eternal glory is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will drive out your enemy before you, saying, Destroy them. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who gave him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you have said, for those who fear him lack nothing. Amen. Celebration of life. Yodosha and Esther Gay Gadwa, May 29, 1967 to July 28, 2023, Saturday, August 26. Ebenezer Community Church, 9200 West Broadway, North Broken Park. We will start with the bottom of our service. We will welcome each and every one of you. Thank you, uh, Brother Siki. The best time those are minister, Pastor Bembo, and everyone else who will be partaking in the service today. We now have our opening prayer by Pastor Zelda Russell Bethlehem Worship Center. Praise the Lord. Shall we please stand as we pray to protect the family? And if you are a pastor here, we have seats up here. You can join us on the stage. Let us pray. Lord, sometimes we do not know what to say, and we just turn to you. That is the case today with our loved ones this team. We turn to you who is our strength during this time of death. You are the giver of life in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who is the source of eternal life. You also understand death, so we trust you today, Lord. Father, you know our grief, the grief of our family, the family members, cousins, nieces, aunts, and everyone in God's friends, family. Give us peace and comfort. Dry our tears through our pain. We know of the cross and the death of your son, Jesus Christ. We know too of the empty tomb. 
How thankful we are that Jesus rose on the third day, never to die again. We cling to his promise because we live. Hallelujah. You live, O oh Lord, therefore we shall live and see you again and see you again. Thank you, dear Father, for this victory over death and for the grace and love that shared that victory have over us. Comfort us in our loss, the family member, the friends for five years, the husband, all is said and done. When he's alone at home, comfort him, O Lord. Deepen our trust in our Savior and strengthen our resolves to live for you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all sing, stand in those of you who are their family members. And sing to him, abide with me, that's all to be given time. And it's all in the bulletin, in the program.
We'll now have scripture reading from Micah 6, 8 to 9, by Sister May Yanfor Gibson, Friend of the Deceased. A reading from the book of Micah, chapter 6, verses 8 to 9. He has shown you, O Malta, what is good, and what does the law require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Listen, the law is calling to the city, and to fear your name is wisdom. He is the role, and the one who appointed it. The word of the Lord. Let's join in the singing of the old, a beautiful hymn, Amazing Grace. I think we can do all five senses, I think we have the time to do. Look for 
Church. The reading is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 16 to 17, and I'm going to be reading from the message version. Like a will that takes effect when someone dies, the new covenant was put into action at Jesus' death. His death marked the transition from the old plan to the new one, canceling the old obligation and accompanying sin, and summoning the ears to receive the eternal inheritance. Pardon me. Inheritance that was promised them. He brought together God and his people in this new way. This ends the reading, the word of the Lord for the people of God. Praise be to God. We will be having a sermon after a few series of hymns. Uh, Pastor Hanford Bemo, Senior Pastor of Tabernacle. Prayer and Freedom Ministry, who pastored also um, our sister Sister will be bringing the word and sermon to us today. And so let us, um, he has re also requested um, a hymn, particularly before he comes up, but we also have a hymn, and I believe we have the time to do our blessed assurance and just slow until Pastor Ben comes up. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washing of blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is our song of the church, praising my Savior all the day long.
Congress, he said to me, well, uh, I am now a widower. Hallelujah. Now a widower. I didn't even know what to tell him. I just said, well, mm-hmm. he's gone. So then I called back, is that something you mean? Okay, this is our pastor, sister, can you hear me? Well, you can't come up and do it. So I called Pastor Lynette because those are the friends that, were, that I know. I stood closer to her than her brother. And I know there are a lot of friends in the teacher. But these ones, I think that I can with them. If you have a sister, give me time to come and help you. I already called you and warned you. You know me. And so, uh, when I called Pastor Lynette, he said, Pastor Jeremy, if you have, I lost my friend. Amen. And that's where I want for us to talk a little bit about. I lost a friend. I lost my friend. When we started coming to church and many things, the first thing we started hearing Jesus said, Hallelujah. Jesus cried for Lazarus. You know, when somebody calls you their friend, amen, friendship is not something that we, take, we should be taking lightly. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Friends are people that, or your relatives, your father, your mother, your siblings are not around. If you kind of put those of friends, amen, it's like a, 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 a build up, a height to the spirit. It can bring healing to your soul. A good friend. Amen. Those of us who did know in the English literature, the, the, the Romans could not have done anything with Caesar. Amen. Had it not been for Brutus. Because we had them, Brutus. And you were these people too. Did you join? You were my friend. Did you join these people too? So friendship can finish your strength and it can get momentum. Into unto you. And that's what these friends were, these two people that I've called, that I know. Like I said, you're many, but these are the ones that I know. And so we will go into it. Let's just start by, 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 by. I want you to come and stand with the head. Uh, Dustin, you can stand behind. Jamsiska, uh, yeah. is here? Is she here? Come, hurry up. Please. The very first question I told on was Pastor Lynette and Sister Cassidy. Why? Because Jesus asked the question when I was sick, did you visit me? When I was at the hospital, did you show up in prison? Did you come? These were people every time that were on the highway going to encourage Brother Jimmy and my sister, Sister you, in her hours of affliction. They stood by her. They were genuine friends. And then they visited all, even and gave all the daily work of a pastor. They went and they gave communion to all. And then, so people like this, and that's how I come by the people, all pastor, them, everybody pastor, like, yes, everybody ought to be a pastor, everybody ought to be a servant, everybody ought to be able to find the wounds of their afflicted. That's the work of a pastor. All these other things we attach to this position, that's not it. The picture is it, the post is it, and all these other extra things of junk. That's not it. The Bible says that you want to say to Moses a seat, but you will not do his point. You will not lift up one finger to help somebody who is sick. So, sister, I don't want to step out. Look, I want to say something to your friend. I want to say something, say goodbye to your friend. Hallelujah. Address all. As if she is still living, the times you are happy, we have the memories you are here. I want you to say something. Let those of us who are on the outside hear something. For right, both of you. And then we'll come back and do the message. There's a place.
there's a place up there for people like Theo. When somebody was in need, Theo was there. There was a time when I lost my home. A lot of people don't know that. I was homeless for about a month. Theo and Jimmy took me in. I used to wait in the parking lot until they got home from work. And then I would go in. And no matter what time of the night it was, food was there. Theo was a friend. And Cassilia, Akula, Macaulay, Lawrence, they're all friends. These are people who know my good, my bad, and my ugly. And they still love me. They still accept me for who I am. Theo was a friend. Not just a friend, but a sister. She was my sister from another mother. From the moment we met, our spirits joined and we were, we were unified. Until the last day, I kept calling her that Friday morning. And said, you know, call me, please. How can you just you know, call me, please? No answer. In my spirit, I knew something was wrong. And I called Jimmy to find out. Yeah. She will forever be in my heart. Siempre en el mío corre. In Jesus' name. Mer, and the name she and I develop calling each other when we're standing together. Mer, let's continue. Hmm. Mer, and I said, I got somewhere to go. I got something on the go to go to. And I called you in and to me and he said, let's go. And you're ready to go. Mer, I will live next conversation. Oh. Three, four o'clock in the morning. On the couch. You on one, I'm on the other. The couch missing you already. I slept on the couch this morning. Me too. We will be there to have that conversation. I went to bed at 5 o'clock this morning. And you were not there. Right? You will never be missed. I remember the last conversation, one of the last conversations we had. We said, Mer, we're not friends anymore. We long past that. We are sisters. So now let's solidify this thing and get our nieces of your sons and my nieces to get married. Stefana taken already, I believe. Because she said she brought Stefana to my house. I said, okay, let's set them up. So she and my son, which one of them? Stefana doesn't know the difference. You look at all of them, all three look identical. Sorry, Stefana, I couldn't help you with that. Anthony, daughter, I don't know you guys listening. She called Anthony. Say, Anthony. Cecilia husband is coming. We are not friends, it's family. I want you to make the best, your favorite food. Anthony, 
Thank you for preparing me because of your sister. You prepared her for my husband. You took care of him. Mer, I love you, girl. You rock, girl. You rock, girl. When I say you rock, oh. it reminds me of you telling me about some poem. That he was talking to you, he was two years old. And he's telling you, I knock you out, girl. I knock you out, girl. And he's hiding and talking about it. Knock you out, girl. Two years old. And just made us laugh every time he said that the way he said it. That smile. That beauty. The brilliance. Oh, the internal beauty. The God fearing woman. The loving woman, the person who has a laugh, will still get up and make a bowl of uh, a pot of soup to carry to somebody who's sick, who in need. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Uh, so, I just wanted to, you know, clear the air on that, so that we can uh, give uh, honor to the ones that are around, and to many of us who have been back in this life. For me, I know she's visited the church, she loved, she spoke there one or two times, but she always wanted more. After the message, she would come and say, Pastor, the message was too short. If somebody who loved the Lord and wanted to continue to serve the Lord, so we want to give her her honor and her glory. But Jimmy, I want to encourage you also. It's a hard thing. It looks like a stigma. Look at it. God can turn that into joy in your life. The Lord prepared you already for this before you were even born from your mother's womb. God knew this would happen to you. And he knew the way it would happen and he gave you uh, encouragement in your inside and made you to be a man to pursue. Not only to pursue, but to gain notoriety. And the Lord will see you through out of this. Brother, I'm telling you, who will come out of this? Hallelujah. God will visit you. Amen. I want to thank you so much for being bold for being a man of God. Oh, Jeff Rusty. Oh, no. I think your mind is strict. Something wrong with you. For you to come to a funeral like this, and you know that somebody is sitting by you, that you have a bunch of things, and you push it in it. And then you pray to even go to the grave, and stay there, and see them bury the person, and you step across the field and say, my brother, and you know for the way that God will do your end. You know, a friend of mine told me something. This woman was a good woman. She, she wanted always the best in me. I don't know about you. Every time she would tell me, Pastor Benmo, the library churches are too many. Why you can't come together and be one vibrant church? Why you can't come together and you say, there is power, there is in unity, there is strength. There's understanding. She will always try to encourage me. Amen. And here we are. You know, when you are a baby, you are. Then nobody, anybody telling you something, you say, I know. You see? You know? 
And so uh, she always wanted working people. Well, a friend of mine told me something, and he said, Father Ben, he said, there were three friends. And three of them are punch bags. They, you know, they bent over. And one of them died. So when he died, they couldn't put him, they couldn't group it in the casket. Now, casket, casket, this casket, if you're going to take the measurement, it is about 80 inches, 84 inches long, the casket here. And it's about 23 inches wide. I mean, 28 inches wide and 23 inches high. That is the, uh, the look at the dimension. Of your dad's house, all the other mansions. You can have millions of dollars sitting down in your bank. Your knee can be written on every street corner and every stop sign can bow down to you. This is it. So Micah began to tell the people the king, the God began to ask them a question in this Micah that was just read. And God began to ask. Is that a of controversy, a lot of issue, a lot of problem with you? You are a rebellious people. You don't listen. He said, what is it that you're trying to give me that you think I will accept? Hallelujah. When uh, David tried to build a temple, God told him, there is no building that can hold me. I am God. Jesus says, I called you through the wilderness. I live in a tent with you. I'm a tent God. You're trying to build something, you cannot build it to hold me. God said, what is it that you you, 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 you give me? You think I want fat or sheep? I want your, your, your gifts? I want uh, bullocks? I want all these things. All these things you're trying to give me, God said, I don't want it. I want it. I didn't ask you for it. Then you got to tell the, the prophet, through the prophet, and God began to say here to instruct us on the things we've been doing. All in your life, no matter how old you are, God is requiring three things from you. Yeah. All your life. And those are what we don't want to do, and we do the extra. Yeah. Extra for working and giving to Jesus. Do this. Yeah, doing nothing. Saying nothing. Yeah. Making noise. He said, God showed you what is it that is requiring of you. God wants for you to do justly to people. He wants for you to love mercy. In other words, be somebody who has compassion. You can meet people where they are come down from all your High horse, you know all that cute after all. Think you something. Be the innocent with compassion. Love my sin. And then on top of that, walk humbly with me. I want for you to be humble so I can impact myself into you. The sister here met those qualities. She met those qualifications. She loved her husband Jimmy. She loved the Lord first loved Jimmy, and not only that, but she loved the church and loved her friends. Those are the qualities that God's asking for. All these other extra we give him. I will build the temple of Babel. He ain't asked you to do all that. A friend of mine was telling me something that he said. She said, she said, Pastor Bemo, she said, my husband, don't get it. She said, all I want for this man to do for me 
King David mm -hmm. one time say, what do you want for five days? The guest said, oh, he gave me a few roses. That's what we call food. You know, how much are you going to buy? I used to buy one time, but I mean, you know, you know, you know, you know, you Say, go get it. You and I in pay a good six hours. Say, go get you roses. That's what I want. He took himself to go and get that ring. Then once I he asked you for this, then he wants to get that. I said, no, you take instruction. Even if you buy a diamond ring, I don't know how many carrots, go get the flower first, bring it, you put it down. Then he said, man, I come here. Then you go grab your extra curriculum activity. <laughs> Do the first things first. So God said, these are the things that I'm asking. You do it. Every one of us know that when you're doing wrong to somebody, you're cheating somebody, you lie, you want to marry somebody, you got something about somebody, you know those things are not good. But yet you do it, you do it. Mm. God said, no. Simple. Three things. So the prophet was telling them how to act. Act justly. How to love, love my sin. How to walk, walk in humility. He gave instructions. Uh, there is a word I stumble on is uh, is Mr. Wine. What a Mr. Wine is is that you 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 don't know those kind of people that that, that want to be. Yeah. They don't want to be. Yeah. They want to be. Yeah. Amen. They want to be, they will try to be. Hallelujah. You want to be. You want to be what God did not ask you to be. You want to dig yourself into that. You not, this time you go into the Bible now, and no man and woman in unisex. Anybody can be inside there. You may you have to all be there. You don't know. That you want to be spirit. Intruding in somebody's privacy. I'm not talking to somebody here. Yeah. Yeah. It's a walk humbly. These are the lessons. That's the 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 the, 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 the guide. That's the, the the direction. The GPS. Because she's going through a journey now, or has already taken flight. That every one of us will take. She needs a GPS to propel her into the mansions that God promised to build. On the streets of God. And these are the qualities that will get you there. It's easy. Close your big mouth. Stop cussing them about people. Stop talking about people the things you don't know. I don't know about all the people who have been bouncing and we say we have no sin, we lie, every one of us. But they remember from the time I knew her. I never had any negative come out of her. Every time I saw her, there was something good come to me. So Maka is saying, these are the things that you need to do. And I started thinking this morning as I was coming, I started thinking about Lazarus. You all know the story. And I started thinking, I said that Lazarus ran. For Jesus to have come and raised him, he had to be Good person to Jesus. Of course, even if you go by Jesus, you have done it because he's God. Now, I don't know about you, but if somebody always would my be I don't think I want to be near you. Amen? But the Bible says Jesus wept, Jesus cried for Lazarus, and the Bible calls uh, Lazarus Jesus' his friend. And so Lazarus, as Jesus visited our home, Lazarus made an impact. Remember the sister talking here, cooking, eating. Lazarus had to be doing something. He was one of them. Two of them were in that house. I know he was a servant. He did Jesus plenty of food. Jesus would have raised Lazarus from the dead without weeping, but he wept because his mind contemplated into the things that, uh, that Lazarus did for him. He was transported, transfigured into those things. He thought about them. That's why when I heard about this woman's death, I was shocked I had to pack. The death down the last I said, then we did I just said, no. 
because I was shocked. Such a beautiful sign. Everybody he talked to, who went to school with her, he talked good about her. So she cannot talk for herself now, but her spirit is here. She cannot represent herself now because she's on another side. Wherever she's going, she does not need this physical clay. They don't enter in there. She has to put down this, this uh, mortality now to put on a new robe. She has to get refreshed to enter into the realm. This one that she's in now, you and I cannot go there. We can go to that room and jump over and jump in her. Now, cast this out going down there. Everybody will say, Does it bow? We cry. Nobody will say, I'm going in there. We're in there. We're all. And even if you went in there, the people would not understand that I'm going to put a death on you because you shouldn't be in there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Your time ain't come yet. Amen. You know, so when I was born, my father was a police officer. Whenever he left his police, his police uniform, I take it. I put it, I put on it, the shoe, then I put it out on my head. So he says, son, one day you wear your own hat. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> he said, leave this party. That's my hat. One day, every one of us has to do this. What about the punch man? Punch back then. You know that? They crush that man and put him in there. The other two sat around there and say, oh, the day we die, I had to bring our back to before us in here. Amen. Every one of us will go through this. Hallelujah. I don't care what your name can be, who you can be, how influential you can be, what a philosopher, or prophet, or bishop, or pope, or this and that, this measurement. We will all be struck into it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They will fit you in there. Amen. Okay? Even if you don't want to be fitted, it will fit you there. It will to break some things on you to put you in there. You will go. Because when you get like this, you cannot be with us anymore. We will on this side. Amen. Okay? And we all want to go to so take heart. So the second scripture in our close. The Bible talks about say, where a testament is. There must of necessity be the death of a testator. For a testament cannot be opposed until a man dies at the point time. As long as this woman was living, we, she could not get, if she got a will, that will that not until people, people who write will and things, that why they don't let anybody see it. They read the will and give it to somebody, they say, keep it when I die, let it speak because you don't want some of the family members you got in the new world and we will kill you before you die. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You die many times before your will. Amen. That's why people don't show will. But if I was saying, well, a testament is that must of necessity be the death of the testator. But a testament is a false after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no use. It is forceless. Why the testator live it? The profound memories, the sweetness, the joy. That's what I call those two ladies here. That this woman shared with us. Let it be the one that will carry us. Every time we think about her, we think about Jimmy, we think about the family. Let us think about the good that came out of her. Let us shine that came out of her. That's what we should remember. That's what we need to encourage ourselves with these words. So very soon we'll be going to the gravesite. We'll say goodbye. Our final farewell to her. And she will well, well. She will fare well. Amen. 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 Things like that. So, family, friends, well, Gina, I want for you to be encouraged. Amen. We are here and you are here. Amen. And the Spirit of God is here with us. Your wife chose God. Amen. She, when I got to know her, I knew her in church. When she died, she died in church. Amen. But I know the boy. That have been created. You, you got to reshape it. Now, uh, going back to the house where the people were sleeping in that room, there will be memories and things to haunt you. But I'm here to tell you that even in those memories, God will bless you. Amen. He's a good God. He came to do us good. He said, When I think on you, I just think how to do you good and not evil to give you an expected end. 
God wants to do us good. So, since you, I thank God for you. I thank God for your life. I thank God that you want to join me. I thank God that the truest and the realness of anything now you know it. You can see now, finally, into the spirit realm. You can see what no man can see now. But Jesus will lead you through it all because you've been through the winding paths. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Benmo. Thank you so much for the word. The word, may the Lord help us and sanctify those words into our hearts. Take it with us. Take it wholeheartedly. God requires justice and mercy and to walk humbly. Amen. Amen. We'll continue now with our service. Um, uh, brother, we have the life sketch right after Minister Sylvester Martin sings. Um, and it's all going to be done by Stephen Gray. Okay, I'm sorry. List of the disease. Right after Brother Martin. Amen. Amen. was a sister to all of us. And um, I remember one time back uh, in the late 90s, we were in Ghana, and there was a Ghanaian pastor that was preaching on you know, a funeral. And he said, death is not democratic. It does not come, it does not consult you, inform you. It just snatch you away. So sister, they were until we meet again. Jesus, 
What's the best thing I have He's the one that I know for sure. He's always in my heart. Do you know I say thank you, God, for strengthening me. So I say, Lord, in love with Jesus. I know, I'm only in love with Jesus, and I fall in love, falling in love with Jesus. What's the best thing I have ever done? So this thing I have ever done. Yes, this is very wonderful program. Very beautiful program. Yes. My name is Paula. I am the niece of Auntie Pia, and I was 1967 until the union of Miss Mary G. Gay and Mr. Johnny W. Gay, both predeceased at Division 45, Carl Firestone. Esther, as she was affectionately called, was the second child, daughter of four siblings and a half-sister. Her siblings include the late Josephine B. Gay, elder sister, the late Stephen B. Gay, which is my dad, attorney Anthony M. Gay, the baby brother and only surviving son, and Gigi Gay, half-sister, sitting in the front. Theodosia began her primary education at the Monrovia Demonstration Elementary School in Monrovia, Liberia in the early 70s. Mm -hmm. In 74, when her father was traveling to the U.S. for further studies, it was decided that she would go to a boarding institution. By early 74, she was admitted at the Gaza United Methodist Mission School, Gumba City, Nimba County, RF. She completed her elementary and junior high school education at the Gonza United Methodist Mission. She, convert, she was converted as Christian while at the Gonza United Methodist Mission. 
Due to her commitment and dedication to her United Methodist Christian faith, she was named a member of the United Methodist Youth Delegation that attended a regional Christian youth fellowship in Abidjan, Nigeria in 1979. She was a devout United Methodist after graduating from the Gansa United Methodist Mission, she had enrolled at the Monrovia College and Industrial Training School on Camp Johnson Road in 1980. She completed her high school education in 1982 at Monrovia College, commonly called MC, coming from an ambitious family. Her goal was to earn at least a college education. After high school, she advanced herself by attending formal com computer literacy classes. She, not satisfied with her level of education, sought admission at the Cunnington University College in Guarfoco, Bond County for quality college education. She matriculated at the Cunnington University College in the mid-80s until the outbreak of hostilities in Nigeria. She majored in accounting in Cunnington, and in 1994, she accompanied her our late to the United States on a medical trip. While Esther, as we affectionately called her, was in the U.S., she took advantage of the Cunnington and Exile academic program and was enrolled in Berea College in Kentucky. She earned her bachelor's in accounting from Berea College in Kentucky and furthered herself for the American job market by doing nursing courses and social work. She was cheerful, intelligent, congenial individual. She wore a bright smile on her face. Auntie, I love you and I miss you and God bless. Praise the Lord. If you are here, you do not have a program, just ask your neighbor to the back of the program, just scan it, and you will see everything that is happening here today. Thank you so much. With your four Harvard University Coalition of Liberians on DED Call, St. Peter's Calvary High School, Alumni Association, Monrovia College, Zulu, Liberian Women's Initiative, Family, and um, the family, we limit that to family. So we want to take two minutes um, to be able to finish up and meet our quota for this cemetery today. So for the first list in here we have is the Organization of Liberians in Minnesota, the OLM. I'm going to come forth with their chief pastor who we have this Stand here a little bit, Jessica. Good, good morning. Is there a member of the organization of Liberians in Minnesota here, Vice Speaker of the President? If so, as you please join me, we can just see if we are. Good morning. I was moved when I listened to the pastor preached and uh, asked the person I was sitting to me, I said I would make him a duty to visit his church. I just think it's full, it's very full. And there's something in it today and that has to do with our soul. The left we live here is just on earth and we'll leave. It wouldn't bother with me. So that rebounding of an American poet, Henry Walsall Longfellow. And I will just read two of his verses from his prime songs of life. On behalf of the Liberian community, the chairman of the board of directors, and the entire Liberian staff and volunteer, we extend to this period family our deepest condolences 
of this transformation from Earth to Heaven. Through all the years, many have during us, giving their share of contribution and services to the community, and at some stage, some time in point, this now. Aaron was what long ago said in the book, Tell me not a more for hunters. Life is but an empty grave. For the soul is there that slumbers, and things are not what it seems. Indeed, life is real, life is honest, and the grave is not as cold. Dust that are to dust returning, but this one never spoken of our soul. Thank you. That's Brother Kamari, he's the leader of the order, the organization of what we were in Minnesota. We now have the Cotton University, and presentation is going to be done by Region 4, CUUA, and then the, the National Association is going to do the actual tribute, Cotton University. Church. Um, I just want to do the tribute for Carpenter University Alumni Association in the Americas. Um, so everything is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Theo was a beautiful woman, a caring woman as we all know. For me, what I remember is uh, when, Tio, when you see Tio, even if you're feeling bad, her smiles alone will make you happy. And I'll go further, I will just say, I think even if you're hungry and she smiles, your stomach will get full. Okay? So, um, so the um, James. The gay and Kadua family, I say in our Liberian way, not my God. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. It is well. Tio, goodbye, huh? until we meet again in a getting up one. Amen. That's our point. Thank you. 
reconciliation and the Father will be on our quality again in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Scott and Daniel have both said it, and let me know. In America. Thank you, Lumina, as I'm fine. I've caught you in America. Now I'm going to have the correlation of Liberians on the call. Coalition of Liberians on DED Gold, do we? So, flow to St. Peter's Calvert High School Alumni Association. Good morning, church. Good morning. Here they come. D. St. Peter Clare High School Alumni Association of North America. If there is still anybody in this edifice that went through the walls of St. Peter Clare High School, please stand in your place or join us here on the altar. My name is Samuel S.S. Kier. I've been designated by our president, Dr. Marco A. Wan, to pay tribute on behalf of D. St. Peter Clower High School, Lower Buchanan Brown Basel County, arguably or inarguably the most astute high school in the Republic of Liberia. <laughs> James Gaiezon Sefa Sedmo You say here that we want to the God more is a bonafide outstanding graduate the Paradise Class of 1987 my friendly competitor in that class. Do we need any further evidence? Do we need any further verification or validation that left a shock and unpredictable? Gather ye rose birds while ye may. Because time is a fly. The same flower that is smiling today could be gone tomorrow. Amen. What do you say to a husband who is crushed in spirit? What do you say to a family of a rambotious? Let loving person who has vanished so quickly. Jimmy? Yes, Thomas. We have not been able to identify the wars to express 
a deeply sorry we are for your loss. But when the president designated me as the president, while you are here, is it appropriate for the secretary of the Alumni Association to pay tribute? He said, God, what is your brother? He's a family member. I designated you to go ahead. And I'm grateful to him because I missed the opportunity last night. I was at the airport and didn't get a chance to speak to you and speak to Tio directly. Because after all we have gone through, you my brother, Jimmy, my parents actually regarded you as a member of our family, if you know that. From flour mill in Bikino, Grand Bazaar. So I missed the opportunity because when I had a chance to meet you the first time, to meet you the first time, after barely two minutes, two minutes. In the seconds, it appeared that she had known me for what 25 years. And then she said to me, Comrade, what is on the agenda for discussion? I said, Sister, I'll have to speak and we'll make some analysis. And then as the year progressed, I got to know to you a little better. It was a calm soul, contagious, communicable smile. Somebody said from the CUC that even if you are hungry and you are here, your God will get full. Your gastric organ will get full because Tio was present. But you mean, this is not easy. Let us not pretend. There are stages in the grieving process. You might have gone through some of them. That could be denied. Is this happening to me for real? But today, as my SIL last year and my children for what ended to you, I thought my behavior well for somewhere here. I thought we'd be able to read about our interspersy with the Samuel Care family as well. Is my wife somewhere here? My, my beautiful wife? Okay, darling. Yeah. So, um, Jimmy, let me not pretend. I don't understand what exactly you are going through. But I go and read somewhere. I go and read somewhere that our omnipotent, our ever present God will work away every tear of those who mourn. And then mourning and grieving and crying and being might be no more. Because all of those things shall have passed away. On behalf of the, the St. Peter Clover High School Alumni Association of North America, Jimmy, we have come today to stay with you, to move with you, to cry with you, to really grieve with you and the entire family of you because this hit us very hard. And the detail will be historical because we didn't see this coming and it was too abrupt. So today, this is what I want to say. Today, I do not know if there's a left fan or if there's a timetable for grieving. But no matter how long it takes for you to grieve, one thing that I'm as sure of, I do not profess to be a preacher, but I know the Lord Himself is really, really close to the brokenhearted. I have read somewhere that He really binds the wounds and He heals. The pain of those who are crushed in spirit as you are today. 
So let me just say on behalf of all your brothers and sisters here, I just think Shaggy gave you the reason we got seven grade. But Jimmy, as a brother and a friend, we know that God will be in control, but this will be difficult. Because every time you and Tio came by the crib, first thing she said, Jimmy, they ask me, am I your friend? Or am I your brother? And I'm very deficient, as you know, in answering the phone and returning the calls. <laughs> but Tio was the one who said, Jimmy, you gotta go ask it. I don't know. I might make some drastic and radical adjustments because Tio is no more. I don't know when she will encourage me not to call me. But brother, God is in control. I will have it. Condolences to you, to the entire family. Sister Law, when you came over and you say, uh, come over to the agenda for discussion, I say, you consume all the news I can tell you what's on the news and how to see that based on analysis. Tio Sorrow is right now, but we know that in the morning there will be happiness, and because we stay in the love of God, grief and mourning and cry and pain do not stay a chance. God bless you. Safe travels. on behalf of Marothia College, FCAA, and NLJ, the tribute for the Zulu class. My name is Yata Clements Gullibabu. Any other person who attended Marothia College over the years, can you join us up here, please? Sunset and evening star, and one flag call for me. 
and may there be no moaning of the bar when I set out to sail to a light and evening star, and after that, the sky. And may there be no sadness of goodbye when I embark. On behalf of the NCAAA and the Maroka College Minnesota chapter, I want to extend, we want to extend our sympathy to the families, the graduate, the GA, and all our friends who are family also as we mourn. I'm a friend of Tio also as we mourn Tio's death. Everyone has said of you who Tia was, she could light up any dark room. And we are appreciative to God to have had her in Marupia College in our lives. And we pray that God will comfort in the family. Now, on behalf of the Tia's class, I'm going to read a treat to you. Hopefully, this will open. A tribute. So Theodosia A. Gardner. Theodosia was a fellow graduate and a member of the Zulu class of 1982. Her warm smile and gentle spirit touched the heart of many who had the privilege of knowing her. Theo's absence leaves a void that can never be filled. May the memory of Tia remind us to cherish our times together and to always be there for one another. In our hearts, she will always be our beloved classmate and a fellow soul. Rest in peace, dear, dear Tia. To the family, please accept our sincere sympathies. May the Lord continue to give you peace and comfort when you need him most. Amen. I think the class did send our prayers and they can write some of the time for the iPhone. Thank you, sister. Like and these are um, members of uh, an organization that Tio served uh, with, all of us, uh, the Liberian Women's Initiative, an organization started in 20, what, 2003 until what, 2011 or 12, and we closed down, we provided um, youth mentoring services, agile literacy, um, and, um, lots of other programs, social services. And one of the programs that Tio volunteered um, was the Adult Literacy. That program we partnered with uh, Brookdale Covenant Church, who allowed us to use their facility. And the River of Life Lutheran Church provided us a van. Um, every Saturday, the pastor paid a driver and fueled with the van. So, and we used to go in the community and pick up um, our mother. You know, that's a program that was very passionate, Tio was passionate about. Uh, many of us come from uh, backgrounds where our mothers didn't know how to read and write. You know, based on our African culture, Liberian culture, you know, women were not um, encouraged or sent to school, only the men. So we have a lot of women who were not educated based on the Western civilization or culture of youth. So she was very passionate because uh, Tio had a mother who wasn't an educator so far. Uh, so she took pride in that program. We brought these women who most of our mothers were brought here to the U.S. Um, and they were babysitting. So we did a need assessment and found that a lot of these people, there's a risk. They were minding the babies, taking care of them. But do you know if there was an emergency to call 911? Do you know if somebody choked to do CPR? They didn't know those things. And they posed a problem. So based on our needs analysis, Put that program in place, and uh, we brought them into the church every Saturday and taught them everything from learning how to read, write, A, B, C, 
tell them their name, learn their address, what are the five components of the address in America. You know, the house number, the street number, the city, the state, the zip code. We broke everything down to them. We taught them how to use the telephone and all of those things. And Jill was part of that. She drove all the way from St. Paul and came here every Saturday to teach the old people. Today, we want to honor Tito. It is her contribution to society. She was blessed to have gone to school, some of the best schools in Liberia, uh, colleges and universities, uh, but she wanted to give back to her community. We heard last night when Katasha was talking about her contribution to immigration. Even though herself was part of the uh, immigration move, movement, but she gave her legal resources to that. It is her contribution to society. So as uh, I started as the executive director of the Island Edition for 11 years. Um, some of our members here, uh, Magdalene, can you hear? Please come. Um, Lynette Dixon was our board chair. Ethel Beasel was a member of the board. Cecilia Zuki was a member of COLA, slash our youth director. Um, Sharon Hyman was a member. Danny Yoni was a member. Lots of other people. Magdalene was a member. She was our communication person. And so forth. You know, we, we contributed so much, and Tia was part of that. Um, we mentored program, we paired girls, young girls, with uh, professional library women. We called it the Play My Play, 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 My Play to our program, College Bound. If you wanted to be a nurse, you wanted to be a doctor, we paired them with those women who were in that profession so that you could give them some guidance. Because in 2009, there was a, a school here, Park Center High School, 60 Liberian girls were pregnant in high school. Who came out to us again? We designed a program around that where we brought the kids to our office in Brooklyn Park and started to mentor them, help them with the homework, and provide a safe space for them. Tio was also part of that. She came again and helped the kids with their math and so forth. I don't know where Mr. Harry met is, but he was our chemistry and math and physics instructor. So I just want to bless God today to the family, um, Tio's family. We understand your love because Tio was our friend and we are keen by her uh, demise. Jimmy, your love, your friend, uh, I call Tia the mother hen. She protected Jimmy with everything that was in her. She was like a mother hen. She, she had his back. Uh, I know you're gonna be in pain for a long time, but we pray that God, in his infinite mercy, you know, will give you strength and peace. Thank you all. We'll now have tributes from the family, the Gage family, the Godwa family, and James Godwa, husband of the deceased. Thank you very, very much to all of you here today. Um, when this thing happened, I will regret it anyway. I was angry with that one. I was looking for somebody to come in because I know my brother was near me. I'm the owner of the family. My brother died. And uh, he was brought up my brother when he was sick for me. At the time, I just graduated from the police department from the police academy. Probably. So when my brother died, I asked my director to help me. And the funeral assumed it. 
in the seventh garden of Jerusalem. So, Tio and I sat down. Okay. So, what you want to do, Tio? I'm going to say I want to go back to school. But I said, okay. But at the same time, she wanted a paper to work. So she moved up here. But the reason I said I was angry with Jimmy is because I talked to Jimmy. And Tio is very, very smart. My brother did not put his hand on his children. The only person that he would ask me to just out the kids in the house. And sometimes when he's angry to beat Tio, he would take a towel and Tio would run him out the room and start laughing. I said, but you said, father, that beat you up. He said, yeah, with a towel. <laughs> so I said, okay. But <clears throat> the reason I said I was angry with Jimmy because Tio was sick, I didn't know about it. I did not know. And Tio called me all the time. Anytime she needs something, she'll call me. I'll call my wife if I'm at work. I said, Tio, this is Tio. That's three days before Tio passed. They asked me for a son. I sent it. And just to complete my story, the reason I ended up Jimmy and we talked about it yesterday in the car. I said, Jimmy. Why you didn't tell me that Tio has cancer or she was sick? They understand? I'm very, very sorry. Say, I'm sorry, I should have. Not that I'm a doctor, I'm not a doctor. I wouldn't, you know, all I'm gonna do is give her the advice that he gave her what to do and what not to do. But when you told me that you're sorry, that because Tio has asked you not to, the only thing that Tio asked you to do is if anything happened to me, call Uncle Sam, call Tony. That's what she said. And then when it happened, you called me, but I was so angry. Then I drilled Jimmy like they like were sitting in front of me in the investigating room. When she died, what happened? What were you? When did this thing happen? Which time you were in? We said that she was in. What you did? I mean, I, I, I interrogated. I'm a police officer. But one of the good things that happened to me, I apologize, but the anger that I have in me, And Jada, thank you very much. I really appreciate you. It came to a time we had a meeting, and she almost cried on the phone, saying that everybody coming at me, they're hitting me, they're doing this, they're saying this to me. So I said, oh, Jada, if you're going to be a leader, you got to always wear the order to best. You can't be a leader without a good proof. So people are coming at you. You know. So you they use that you know, you speak by us and you get what you're supposed to do. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Very good. So thank you, the husband. Goodbye world. I stay no more with you. Goodbye pleasure. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I'm singing this for those who are in here and have not given your life to Christ. There is no other way on the earth. No other way of I was the baby. But since Theo 
and my sister Wally. That's Pastor Pastor. They spent me. They combed my hair. They took me to movies. And she saw that I was so in love with my neighbors, the Lama people behind our house. That was selfless friendship. I didn't care where they were living in. I didn't care. When they put their foot in the sand for Daniel Jika, I put my foot in the sand for that thing Jika and then when I go home, my mom would spank me. Why would you put your foot for Jika to go over? I just wanted to blend with them. So she was looking for a name for me and said that was my Lama name and she said Tata Koto Ho. Everywhere she saw me, Tata Koto. Tata, I go to the house, Tata Koto. We started laughing because she know I didn't like eating. So I'll keep my food for her when she comes. I gave her the food. I'll sit right by her. She would eat all my food. Then I'll throw myself on the floor and start crying. And you will not believe this. This was our routine every day. That was our love. Just to, <laughs> just to let you guys know that for that, you want to have some food with my sister. Yeah. This is your sister, Gigi. She's 20 years old. Just for you guys, for all the folks that know. I'll try to be brief. Um, Jimmy, yeah. look around. All of us will be gone. Start to go tomorrow. Enjoy the game. Your brother from the Club will say, Breathing is not an event. Nobody's going to tell you when you do it. I want to apologize to my folks. I'm apologizing not because I took a different stand, but the way you went to follow Lord Jesus. I speak to you from somebody who has been there. To lose a loved one, to lose a loved one, the way I put it when I lost my loved one, you know how you try to sit on a chair and you move the chair from under you. I know where you're going to. Go and talk about the things that you share with me. Take off from where the pastor left us. All of us here, they be moved that are not less than 2,000 square foot, 8,000 square foot, whatever. This is 8 by 2, 16 by 2, this is 32 square foot. Who can live in the 32 square foot space right now? That's where we're going to end up. You see, fish, not speaking to the neighbor, inward. So I want to say thank you, Jimmy. Thank you for being there for the All of us standing here, half of us didn't know what was going on. And I get it. Why? Because we have to respect the institution of marriage. When a husband says to a wife and a wife says to a husband, don't tell my brother, don't tell my uncle, don't tell my mom. Naturally, we will get mad at you for not telling us, but I thank you for honoring that. Because when people go through what you're going through, you are inundated by calls every day. Oh, how are you feeling? 
Oh, the dance of healing, let us see. Oh, let us see. Try the other one. Extra try the other one. And it pulls you down. If you had a way, if I had a way, I would say, I would just make a recording when you call, oh, how are you doing? You put the recorder on because you would talk until your spit dry out of your mouth. So that reason of let's keep it private is not to because you don't like the family or you hate the family, it's to maintain that sanctity and maintain peace. And I thank you for that. God will remember you for that. I know we family now appreciate that and we will remember you for that. For the friends of you who have become the surrogate family, you were the ones who were there when you were not there. You stayed with her. You visited her. You prayed with her. The glory of God be with you. Blessings will come upon your children and your grandchildren. The friendship you have shown to you that transcended into families, into sisters and brothers, will never be forgotten. God bless us all. <coughs> As I listened to all of the uh, applications of my former sister yesterday and today, Pastor Dolo just stated yesterday that part of Frank Latil. What that means, I would like to say that. Well, I'll call up the five seven today because there were five uh, five yesterday. Uh, the Doris, uh, Sierra and the rest. You have, solidified, you have solidified what I would describe as what constitute the attributes of a genuine friendship. You see, you have distant associates, close associates, friend buddies. You are confidants. And there's no one here, as a matter of fact, the family that really grew up with her as I did back in La Quasi, play around the yard. Fell down, chased each other, got on the sand. She was at Ganda, I was at MC at the time. We did it all. Everyone has said a whole lot here today, which is so genuine. You see, as we age, there's, there's tend to be a gap in our behavior pattern, as you know. This woman never changed. Throughout, had I known, I would never have, have, I've never have taken up my uh, you have expansion trip overseas in the state in the states. It created a gap. I was I was away from her for a while. Now that I'm trying to work out here, she's gone. But I would like to say <clears throat> in closing, to the ones that stood with her, sat with my brother Jimmy. The gay family stands with all of you. In 5-7, I guarantee you, I live in Monrovia in Texas, but I've established a footprint in Minneapolis because of my policies and because of you. A gentleman made a, a comment yesterday uh, that worked with the uh, PPS program. He would like to establish a, a trust, uh, trust fund, all right, in honor of her for the TPS. To keep a legacy going. I uh, want well, if you in the house and they see me after this, we'll make that happen. Uh, everyone they're talking about, you know, yes, you can't keep speaking the rest of it. That's so true. Because as Christians, that the Lord said, if you keep it in your heart, God, He won't listen. You right He ain't gonna listen. So don't fool yourselves. So, with that being said, We're going to do it, let's do it now. We did not. Yeah. Well, you see, you see, to your heart? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We want you to replace our team. Okay? We want you to replace our team. And if there's anything that anyone in any way can give time, I've done to you, we apologize. So the press of heel in the recorder, I would like to present Chief Mr. Young. 
your feet look at her like you are treated here. This is pure blood. If you are to know her completely, this is the baby. I thank you. So we just want to say, God, thank you so much. And to my brother over there, who was a sister who loved me. Because I understand, but the Bible also says we need to be open. So that way we can heal, we can spread the word to other people to live and learn from other people. Not to be deceived. God is for everybody. I just want to say happy sympathy and thank you for everything you did with me. And uh, for her mother and my mom, they were very good. And she tried so hard to get me to get to know her niece. That her mother taught the girl so much like me, talk like me, and she did her. So she was called the infant. Sister Way, you have to call Anthony and meet his daughter. And she did it, and then in the studio went and brought us together, and I got the photos with the little girl. So we text each other. So when she passed away, I said, well, I guess it was the way God wanted us. And I just told Anthony, I said, oh, I can have to trace your sister, but I always do. For you. I Thank you, Gabe family. We now have the Godwell family and the husband himself, Brother James Godwell. So you wouldn't know me and the other brother for James Cadwell. And that's my brother. Uh, before the Cadwell family, uh, gave our last respect to our wife. It's okay. You are not alone. My younger brother here, he didn't tell me that my wife was sick. And when he called me on Saturday morning, I left him and I called Casilla because Casilla was a new owner and I was the best man. I will marry you. Not that I didn't believe him, but such a news is <laughs> hard to understand. Especially when you know that the person you didn't hear about them being sick. So it hit me until Casilio has to verify that yes, it is true. Your brother is telling you the truth. Then our oldest sister, Anna here, well, Samina and the rest of the people, has given as it is. Because what can I say? I said, Jimmy said, Tio is dead. And the one who questioned me, I said, don't ask me. I was hurt, angry, and... But later on, while we were going through the process, I questioned him, I said, Jimmy, why? He said, Tio wanted it that way. What can we do? So we accepted him. And we started a process. But one thing I want to tell the gay family here that we should rejoice 
Because the Bible says, in everything we should give thanks, in Christ Jesus, which is concerning us. The only death as I live and I continue to live until God and coming, I will hurt me and mercifully if when the person is, doesn't know God, don't know Christ. The Bible says you should cry unmercifully because there is no hope. No hope at all, my people, when you don't, you don't. But our sister, our wife here, she knew the Lord. He said, by their fruit, you shall know them. And we see the evidence in here. The proof is there. I remember when we went to St. Peter's for the family Thanksgiving. Oh boy. Do you where is my jolly rice? Above all the people, my brother Flores went in. He said, Brother Lord, I cook a jolly rice. And when I tasted it, I went two rounds. And I continued to ask her. But when they started moving from state to state, she wanted me to follow up for the jolly rice. And I said, Girl, you need to get closer, man. You know, so the Gagua family will be lost. There is no replacing, there is no photocopy. The original has gone. Wow. What a wife that cares for everyone. Brother in law, Jimmy. Then I said, Brother, I know you beat my butt. Then he started telling me all the stories from high school, from elementary, and I said, You're lucky you're not closer to me. And I will show you the big brother thing. But we want to thank God for the kind of work that we have. Not because you are gone, but we're counting on a kid family. We have never been communicating before, my people. Let us do it. It is true for death that we got to get closer to death. Like we were going to the funeral home to build a body. My brother said, Well, it is not a good time, but it helps for to know the family because everyone is in different states. But communication. You know, before you guys leave from here, leave whatever contact you have with Jimmy. We need to encourage each other. We need to support each other. Life is too short. We don't know who next. We don't know who next. So, it is our prayer that God will see us through. The book of Romans says there is nothing that he will put on us that we cannot be. He knows we are capable of hindering this time of sorrow. And I know God will see us through. Uh, my other sister will make a remark. Hallelujah. Thank you. I really want to talk. Because I have a friend. I thank you for being there. We were not there because we were there. So thank you. Thanks to all of you guys. Jimmy, thank you. God is in control. I've been there. I'm crying because I've been there. They know. There is no sorrow, there is no burden, 
So my family, life is too short. I end my speech. And we'll give the motto seminar. On behalf of the Cardinal family, I'd like to say to the gay family, I give us sympathy. My fondest memory of this year will be 2017 Thanksgiving Day. She made it so memorable for us. And like everybody said, her smile will light up her room. And I can just picture her and I will keep that picture in my head for as long as I can. Again, thank you all for coming and thank you all for being there. We at this time on behalf of the Cadwell family, we want to deposit this with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the, that's the Holy Spirit. Says to you, go in peace, my man. The job is well done. Thou good and faithful servant. I love for you, my dear, my sweetheart. That all we have to do in this life is to be genuine, to be real, to be loving. To be here and to love the Lord. And I thank you. Thank you. And thank you. In Jesus' name. What else can I say? You have said it all for me. And I stand before you to confirm and to affirm that all of the accolades and all the characteristics that have been enumerated for my wife is so true. My wife loved God, and I do love God too. I'm crying, I'm sorrowful, but at the same time, I am happy. I am happy because my wife died in the Lord. And that's my consolation. And that should be your consolation too. My wife loved God. Those are specific characteristics. On top of that, my wife loved family. And I do love family. When we got married, November 30th of 2011, she took me to California. Let's go so you can see my side of the family. Took me to Uncle Sam's house. Took me to Samson's house and they gave me a king's welcome. When I went to Liberia, 
I went to a council gay's house. One of the cousins. They gave me a king's welcome. So I'm glad, I'm happy that I'm in good hands. And my wife is in good hands. My wife was my prayer partner. She was my best friend. There will be time I will come from work after a long 12 hour day or night. I will come home and I will put the keys in the door and I will hear talking. In our house, everywhere we have lived, we have always made a conscious decision to have an extra room for strangers. When I'm at work, coming home, I put a key in the door, I hear voices, and I stand, and I listen. My wife is in the other room, in the stranger room, interceding. Interceding for me. Interceding for family. For the gift of family. For the daughter of time. She's interceding. She's praying. Lord, protect my husband. Bring my husband home safe to his place. That's the kind of woman my wife was. If I were to introduce you to my wife, as my friend, she will latch right onto you that she has known you for years. That's the kind of person you are. My wife will use my shortcomings, my frailties, my foibles, my weaknesses. She uses those things. Build me up. For 12 consecutive years that we were together, not one day did she call me by my name. Everything was baby. So, I'm crying because I'm missing my baby. But at the same time, I'm happy because she was a believer. And so I am convinced that she is resting with the Lord. To conclude, I want to see my baby rest in peace till we meet again. And to add from my heart your heart, on behalf of the God of God, and the gave God, we want to say thank you for the upholding of love that you have shown here today. You could have been at work. You could have been wherever you want to be, or you wanted to be. But you have been with us. I want to say a special thank you to the Russell. Special thank you. When I call, they answer the call. And so did many of you that are here today. So thank you. I love you. Let's stay connected. Let's love one another. Thank you for all that you have done. Your time, your energy, your love. I appreciate that. God bless. Hallelujah. I know our time is first spent and we're coming to the end.
Thank you, Brother God, Lord. Saw that change. Saw that even though you have your muscular strength, but when Sestio came, it was just another level in your life. Guys, thank God for your wives. That's the reason why God has them in our lives. Thank God for your wife. That's the reason. God bless you. Hold on to this women. There it is in prison. Amen. We'll not have prayer for the family, but patience. See first. That's the patient seat of action. And then right after that, we'll call Sister Doris Parker up for who is a friend of the deceased to do our acknowledgement. And then we we'll do our closing in. Thank you. Hallelujah. Can we all stand? I want you to join your hearts and mind right now as we pray for the family. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you. The Father of all fathers, the lover of our soul. Lord, we come to you in this hour, in this season, because we have no other place to turn. You are our hope, you are our life, you are our strength. Father, Lord, you said, oh God, Lord, I will not leave you alone. I will send you a comforter who will comfort you and uphold you and help you. We ask, oh God, Lord, that the Holy Spirit, Lord, will surround the bereaved family and friends. Our hearts are broken. We are two in pieces. We don't know what to do. We don't know where to turn. But Lord, we turn to you in this hour because you are our strength. You are our shield. You are our shelter. You are the God that uplifts us. Oh God, no, we cannot be lifted. But we do not have the strength. So Father, by your spirit, oh God, lift up your people, Jesus. Let up the family of God. In the area of God, in the moments of something in your life, oh God. Spirit of the living God, help them to remember you in every time, Lord. Your heart is broken. Help them, oh God, to remember, Lord, that you are there. Because you are a very present help in trouble. Only you can do it. No friend can do it. No family can do it. No one else can do it but you, Jesus. We lift them up. We lift Uncle Jimmy unto you, Jesus. Right now, Lord, he might not be able to God to know, but we know of God you are able to guide him in every step. And it's a long journey of God ahead of the family. And Lord, we cannot walk at all by ourselves, but we ask you, oh God, to walk along with us. Move along with us. Stand with us. Stay with us. Lord, remind us, oh God, each moment that you are there. Because of that, the word says, Lord, yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because you are with me. We trust and believe, Lord. We place them in your hand. You take over. When our strength stop, we turn it over to you. That you will take over, Lord. Take over, Jesus. Let the peace that passes all understanding. That peace of God, Lord, that only you can give. Let it rest in the Bible with your people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Blessed Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen.
Johnny and Zelda Bunker. Thank you so much. The Emerson Center Community Church, Pastor Fabla, his wife, Ms. Chris, and the entire uh, Ebenezer family, thank you so much um, for allowing us to have the service and giving us a reduced price. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Trotman Richard is uh, our program designer, and also Chester, Brother Chester, we are here with on sound. Thank you. The funeral home, Bowman Hunt. Uh, Jeff is the director. Joshua Court. Uh, Joyce Cooper from ATO's office. Thank you so much. No cost at all. This Evelyn Daimon Jackson. She made all the food, did not charge us to pick anything to prepare. Mm. This Rachel, he did decoration. Uh, live stream, we have Brother Natalia Sila. He's free. I mean, uh, live streaming this video you can see it on YouTube um, after today. Um, friends of Tio, all of those who make contributions travel from near and far. We want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. On behalf of the Dadwa family, on behalf of G Jimmy, on behalf of the Gay family, we want to say thank you to all of you. Tio's friends and uh, you know, community for coming together. God bless you all. Uh, after this, um, will be the eternal. Maybe the pastor has some announcement, but uh, it will be. Yeah, so if they want to find it, they should just uh, write the husband name or the wife name on YouTube. Mm -hmm. it, will, it will come out. Okay, so you just uh, search, the search the video of this event from the wake and the funeral. All you have to do is type in. Gadwa, Jimmy Gadwa, Jim Gadwa, or Theo Gadwa in a uh, YouTube platform and you should be able to pull it up and watch it. We don't know how long you're going to be up there for, you know? Oh, uh, it's up to you. Okay. Yeah, but you it's there forever, anyway, yeah. Um, from here, we're going to Mount Kenyahu, I mean, Mount Cemetery. This is where the internment is going to be. After the internment, it will be recast right here in the um, fellowship hall at this church. Thank you so much, and God bless. I'm the directors are ready now, so we'll be giving that up here quickly. We just had a quick um, announcement, kind of extend the radio, so you can do that quickly. Sorry for pulling this out, but my nephew, Akima, who is leaving from California. The doctor called him last night that his son, the oldest son, had a heart attack. So he had to go back last night. So we are pretty perfect. So his name is Chu. So we do our closing hymn, and Pastor Bemo is going to pray and do our benediction. Let us all stand. Amen. Amen. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Amen. Oh, 
Everyone is saying bye to Tio. She was one of the, she was having a great testimony here today. This is Abanisa uh, Church in Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, for our sister Tio. So, people from all part of the world, everywhere in the United States, met here to celebrate Sister Tio uh, last day. And uh, there was a great testimony from start to end. Uh, it's, it's, it was a day to, uh, to be part of. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of the program.